it's prime time, and I'm glad to be here. Brad Caldwell, Bill Harshaw here. We are glad to bring you another episode of Primetime Preps. This is episode number three, and uh, man, just excited to be here. I know that's right. You know, this is a season that nobody knew how far it was going to go, and uh, we're, we're just happy that we still have the season going. Uh, it's always been a, a lot of fun uh, throughout the course of a season just to kind of see the, the ebb and flow of the season as it happens, and Man, we've had some good football lately. And we're right smack in the middle of it now. You know, we're, we're not too far from the playoffs, and we still don't know exactly what that looks like. There's a lot of rumors that are going on. Uh, playoff brackets are out, though, and so um, I'm interested to see kind of how it, it all works out. You know, the, they're talking of play-in games. We've heard that. We haven't seen that on the bracket. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but we've got a playoff bracket, so we're, we're excited about that. Um, and, you know, we're going to do this thing all the way up through the state finals and uh, talk to you about what's going on around the state. That's right. You know, and a couple of the playoff pictures that we've, we've kind of seen or heard of is, you know, one, if you've had a COVID cancellation, you're automatically eligible for the playoffs. We've yes. heard that. Uh, then there was uh, something that was said at War Memorial Stadium uh, Friday night that stated uh, everybody is going to be uh, eligible for the playoffs and everybody will have a play-in game if they choose to do so. Now, I mean, if a team is 0-10, uh, they have the, the, the choice to say, you know what, we're going to sit this one out, guys. Thanks for asking. Uh, but, you know, we've heard def- several different scenarios on what if and, you know, no official word from the AAA on that. Yeah, and so we're, we're still trying to work through that. I'm trying to work through getting stung by Yellow Jackets. <laughs> oh, no. My God. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't today because I, I don't Clinton know if I could. <laughs> I, I don't know that I could have made it, but I was mowing my lawn yesterday, and apparently just mowed right over uh, a nest of yellow jackets. And man, you know, I don't have much hair, as you can see. And for those of the, you that are listening, I don't have much hair. Um, and man, right on top and of this, he has more than I do. <laughs> right on top of this bald head of mine, man, I got stung, and then I got stung on my side. I was like. My gosh. And let me tell you, getting stung by yellow jack is no fun at all. No. And the head is a very sensitive oh. place to get that as well. I've been stung. I've walked underneath a nest uh-huh. and had one come down and nail me, and it's not fun. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. So, anyway, uh, glad to be able to recover and, and bring you primetime preps this week. And we're going to go to what went down in prime time. And, uh, you know, there was two massive games this weekend in the state or last weekend in the state, I should say, Um, Conway and Cabot, Benton and Parkview. We're going to bring you some stuff from Benton and Parkview just a little bit. We'll tell you a little bit about what we did and our part in that game. But uh, let's get right off with Conway and Cabot and probably one of the best games that has went down in the state so far. I don't know if that we'll be able to top it even. Uh, Conway went to Cabot, the rival game there, and Conway came away with a 52-49 victory um, over the Cabot Panthers, and it was a great victory for uh, you know Conway. You know, you watched that game. We were we were we were kind of following it uh, throughout the the course of the night uh, with the game that we were doing uh, Friday, and you kind of see these scores come up, and it's like whoa! All of a sudden, you look down, and uh, you know Conway's up twenty-one to nothing at the half, and you're going, "What did we miss? What's going on?" We didn't expect that type of a game, uh, but then uh, here come Cabot. Oh, we absolutely here come Cabot. Uh, to the to the tune of Tyler G throwing or Gee, I'm sorry, throwing thirty one to forty nine, three hundred and sixty six yards and six touchdowns. The UCA commit really lit up the skies, especially in the second half. Um Ben Weiss um is a guy that is he just continues to light up the sky. Twenty seven to forty three, four hundred five yards, six touchdowns. I think he topped the four hundred mark for the second weekend in a row. Um, Bryce Bohannon had 10 catches, 233 yards, and three touchdowns for Conway. Um, Conway, like we said, got up 21-0. Um, and uh, Cabot scored 49 points in the second half, but That's it wasn't incredible. enough. It wasn't enough. Fell short 52-49 to at Cabot. A huge, huge game uh, going on between Cabot and Conway. And, of course, that was a game that we – had uh, could, had looked at in our, our picks last week, and uh, that one lived up to its primetime hype. It absolutely lived up to it. Uh, moving on, like I said, we had a part in the uh, Benton Parkview game. Um, as we've stated before, we are the uh, broadcast crew for the Pottsville Apaches. But um, last week they had a COVID cancellation, and we went to War Memorial Stadium and, and broadcast 
there, and uh, we were able to uh, do the Benton and Parkview game. And uh, Benton came away with a 30-20 to 20 victory. Um, of course, Parkview is loaded with Division One athletes, including uh, Landon Rogers, who we are going to have on the show here in the next segment, but also Aaron Outley. We got a chance to catch up with Aaron Outley at the game. Aaron, uh, you got to kind of have to sit out a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit of what happened with your injury. Uh, I was trying to make a cut, and basically what was playing, my knee kind of snapped, so. Yeah. And found out I had an injury to it, and I put a little bit. But hopefully I'm just ready to get back recovered. Yeah. 100% healthy and come back ready to play football. Do you know how long you might be out? Uh, not, not yet. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, – well, tell us a little bit about your commitment to Arkansas and why you decided up for Arkansas. Uh, I feel like the program was the best fit for me. Um, I just felt like it was home. I mean, I had a great relationship with coaches, and I just felt good with them. And yeah. That's my, my home, one more heart. I got you. Always be a little hog, so yeah. Be hog. Tell us about your relationship with the new coaching staff. How How is that? He checks on me about every day. We hit, always talk on the phone every day. Uh, we love each other. I mean, we just really get, get ready to know each other, and we're just ready to be up there and help turn the program around. Gotcha. How'd you feel about that Mississippi State win the other day? I feel excited. I text Coach right after the game. He texted me. He said, that's just the beginning, so I'm just ready to start yeah. the new trend for the Arkansas Razorback. So, so for somebody who hasn't seen you play, tell them what your game is like. Um, it's just it's undetermined, man. I can do everything. I can block. I can catch. I can run routes. Uh, I'm good in open field. Open field tackle. It's hard to tackle me down, so... Just ready to get out there and put my talents to the test. Gotcha. You know, Coach Bolding has come in to Parkview and he's taken over and really turned you guys around. Tell us uh, what 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 does Coach Bolding do that uh, has made you guys such a contender? Uh, he's just continuing to push us. I mean, push us to our harvest limit. You know how great we can be. So he just expects us to do great things and we just excel the way he pushes us. All right. Um, what what message would you have for uh, Arkansas Razorback fans out there right now? Um, I'm just ready to get up there. And I'll be up there soon and ready to put on for the state. All right. And that was Aaron Outley, the uh, Parkview tight end, Arkansas Razorback commitment. And he he's had a knee injury, um, and he's out for the season there um, at Parkview. And and they could have used him on Friday night, Bill, as uh, Benton took the thirty to twenty victory. Um, over Parkview, we were highly impressed with uh, the Benton Panthers and the way that they controlled the ball game. Uh, without a doubt, you know there were some ebb and flows in that game as well. Uh, as we we began that that ball game, we didn't know exactly if this was going to be a knockdown dragout or not. Uh, but things got underway pretty quickly for Benton, and you know over the course of the game, uh, you, you kind of felt like they had the upper hand uh, throughout the majority of it. Great defense was being played by both sides. Uh, of the field but a hard hitting game too very My hard goodness. hitting you know that's one thing that we had we were discussing you know on and off air while we were doing the game is that you know it's really good to see two teams with an established rushing game uh that wasn't afraid to you know lower that shoulder pop some pads yeah. uh you know and just run over at people and we saw Landon Rogers do it uh we saw several players uh do it but it was a, an outstanding ball game and and one that I certainly enjoyed attending absolutely it was a, it was great to be a part of that and we want to thank coach uh, Brad Bolding for letting us be a part of that uh, there at Parkview, or actually at War Memorial Stadium, I should say, um, as uh, Benton came away with a 30-20 to victory. And we heard from Benton coach Brad Harris after the game. Uh, coach Brad Harris of the winning Benton Panthers. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Big win for for Benton Panthers tonight, you know, mm-hmm. against a very good uh, Parkview team. Uh, you guys uh, – in the third quarter there, it looked like uh, Parkview might be seizing the momentum. What did you tell your kids there at that time to get that momentum back? Well, at halftime, we didn't feel like we had played real well. We had been pretty sloppy offensively and missed some plays defensively. So we really just talked about energy and effort defensively and execution. You know, it, it goes down to just basic fundamentals of football. But, uh, you know, just playing with a lot of energy on defense. And the guys responded, did a really good job, I thought, of swarming the football. Uh, you know, Landon Rogers is a, he's a tough one, man. That dude, he's good, uh, very explosive, got an arm that he can make any of the throws on the field. You know, they had a hard time catching the football tonight, but uh, we tried to put a lot of pressure on him and uh, gang tackle him. You know, you didn't see any of our guys tackling one on one, but we hit him all night and uh, we made him want to have to run the football tough every play. Yeah, 
What what do you do to deal with the speed of park view? Well, everything we do is we, we try to cage everything in, you know, as far as uh, we've always got an overhang player for our defense because we're not blessed with the most speed out there. We got guys that run pretty well, run pretty well to the ball. They're not going to time a good 40 time, but they're going to chase the football really well. We really emphasize that in practice with pursuit drills and, and the tempo of practice that we have and everything. So, you know, they do a tremendous job. And, and our guys, the outside overhang guys and safeties did a heck of a job rolling the alleys. Our linebackers did a good job, you know. Of, of helping contain those guys, you know, they they got a lot of speed. And they got around us a couple of times for some plays, uh, but for the most part, I thought I was real pleased with our defense tonight. When you're playing a kid like Rogers, how what is the kind of game plan that you you do for a kid that you know that's a little bit of higher level player? Right. Well, we you know we had seen him three games, three films on him, and everything, and uh, we really. If we could keep from getting beat over the top, we wanted to try to make him throw the football as much as we could. And uh, we wanted to try to take away the option run game, quarterback counter from him, because, man, he was explosive in weeks one, two, and three. Man, I tell you what, he'd run the backside counter tough. So we did a really good job of trying to play backside pursuit. They'd always show some kind of flash motion and bring him out the backside. So the backside of our defense did a really good job with our safeties and our weak side linebackers tonight. What's your schedule like or look like coming up? We've got Mountain Home in next week, uh, and then we go to Greenwood in week eight, and then uh, got Lake Hamilton at our place in week nine, and finish up with Van Buren on the road. So, you know, it's it, it, it gets tougher, you know, as the year goes on. We got to go to Greenwood. That's going to be a tough one in a couple weeks. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate you guys. That was Coach Brad Harris of the victorious Benton Panthers over the uh, Parkview Patriots, and you know, Benton played a great game and really set themselves up to uh, be the main competitor in the 6A West to Greenwood. Uh, moving on, uh, another great game uh, in the natural state last week was the uh, Nashville Scrappers coming up with a 36-35 to victory over the Pulaski-Robinson Senators. And, uh, you know, it came down to a missed field goal by Robinson at the very end. That was the difference. And, you know, that's we knew we were going to get that type of a, of a performance in this game. That was another one of our games of the week uh, last week. But, you know, we knew that both of these ball clubs, no matter where they play, uh, they're pretty tough. Uh, you know, I personally have played against Nashville multiple times as well as Robinson. But Nashville is the one that kind of leaves the bad taste in my mouth because – they're always tough, uh, without a doubt. But, you know, Nashville, they racked up 388 yards of total offense versus Robinson. And uh, it's kind of kind of fun when you get that many yards and, and are able to, to with just kind of hold off on a last-second field goal to win. Back-to-back -back tough weeks for the uh, number one team in the 4A there at Robinson. Of course, they had a COVID cancellation, so they went down to Trinity Christian um, in Texas and uh, got walloped pretty good. And then this last week lost a heartbreaker to uh, Robinson. And so, you know, they're, I'm sure they're going to be able to uh, lick their wounds a little bit. They'll come back strong. They'll be fine moving on. And, I, you know, this could have very well been a uh, preview of the 4A state championship game. That 4A7 is just that tough. And it really is. And, you know, this is one of the things that I like about this part of the season is that you, you start getting these 5-0, these 5-1 you know, these undefeated teams or teams with maybe one loss. And uh, you, you really get to prove your mettle and see who would come out on top. Now, these two teams, it's entirely possible, could face the off again in the playoffs. You never know. No. Um, and it'd be interesting to see. I'd love to see that game uh, as well uh, you know, over again. Just kind of hit a, a repeat on that one, reset the PlayStation and go again. Uh, you know, whatever you need to do. But, um, you know, those types of games, we got some of them this week. Uh, that we're going to look at, but uh, love those types of games. Uh, COVID cancellation actually set one up for us this last week as Ozark beat Darnell 48-13. Ozark has really set themselves up to be that, that the champion or, or number one seed out of that 4A4 there. Ozark, of course, they were expected to be that. Um, they jumped all over Darnell 14-0. They led 21-6 at the half. And really, they just never got a chance. Darnell never really got a chance to get into it. No, they really didn't. You know, quarterback uh, for for uh, Ozark, uh, Harper, Harper Falkenberry, uh, he's rushed for over 1,000 yards this year, 1,052 yards on the season, uh, and he continues to get things done. And I was looking at the stats from that game and uh, really impressed with the rushing attack from Ozark, mm -hmm. uh, a team that we will personally will see in a couple of weeks. Uh, but, uh, you know, Ozark able to get things done on the ground and, I'm a little surprised. I thought Dardanelle would be able to have a, a tougher, stronger defense, more bend, not less break. Uh, but Ozark able to get things done. Ozark um, has really set themselves up great in that conference over the last few years. They've won the junior high 
uh, seventh grade. I think they've won all the conference championships all the way up for the last three seasons, including senior high. So they really got something going great there at Ozark. And, uh, you know, they, they pretty much acquitted themselves uh, very well this week. And, and really outside of uh, maybe Mina this week, they – they probably are going to win that conference. So, uh, But we'll see what happens. Um, moving on, the last game that we picked last week was the Fordyce Junction City game. And we both picked Fordyce. It was the only game that uh, we picked the same on. Fordyce coming away with a 21-6 victory over the Junction City Dragons. And, you know, we knew that was going to be a big one. Uh, we both agreed on that. And it's like on paper they look pretty evenly matched. But then you think back last week, or rather last season, I should say, uh, Fordyce and this team also faced off against each other, and it wasn't pretty then either. But uh, Fordyce, Fordyce able to get a big win over Junction City, rushing for 216 yards uh, at Junction City with the 21-6 victory. 21-6, they set themselves up to win that uh, that two a South region there. Um, Fordyce, uh, you know, played played Junction City in the state championship game last year, and uh, you know, again, could be another preview of a state title uh, matchup here um, mid-season. So, that being said, we're going to take our first break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Arkansas Commitment and uh, Parkview quarterback um, Landon Rogers, and you are watching Primetime Preps. Here, in the heart of the River Valley, is St. Mary's Regional Health System. Here is the area's most comprehensive range of medical services, along with advanced treatment options and responsive emergency care. Here is our team of more than 900 professionals who bring health care to life through people caring for people. And it is here where you can count on St. Mary's to always be, because to us, community matters. For more than 90 years, our investment in our community has been unmatched. And today, that couldn't be stronger. St. Mary's, we're here for you. Medicare is October the 15th through December the 7th. Call Jero and Associates for help with your Medicare plan. There are several new plans available for 2021. Jero and Associates has agents all across the state of Arkansas who specialize in helping you with your Medicare needs. Protect your most valuable asset, yourself. Call Mike Jero at 888-360-8611 to schedule an appointment today. Joining us on the Jero and Associates hotline is uh, Parkview quarterback, Landon Rogers. Landon, thanks for coming on today. Of course. All right, Landon. So uh, you guys are off to a, a pretty good start. Last week got beat up a little bit against Benton, but uh, you, you guys still showed yourself pretty well over there. Uh, tell us about how your season is going with the Patriots so far. Um, as far as the season's going with the Patriots, it's going great. Uh, we could have did better. We, oh, what happened? Okay, we're having a um a lot of hiccup. You know, we had a couple of hiccups during the game, but all that's fixable. And when we do fix it, we're a much greater team, and we will be more successful. And when that happens, we will start to punish people, which we already <laughs> have before, and we would do from here on now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So as far as that comes, and I trust in my team, and our team trusts in me. We trust our coaching staff, and we believe that if we play as a team we can be the team that everybody thinks we can be. So you do have one of the best coaches in the state, Brad Bolding. He's turned that yes, program sir. around there. Tell us what it's like to play quarterback for Coach Bolding. Uh, it's no cakewalk. It's no cakewalk, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, even though he's not one of the, the main guys that coaches me, he is he's a big factor when it comes to everything that I do and how I lead a team. He's a very he's, – he's almost like a father figure in a lot of ways. He's real – He's a real outgoing, he's a real outstanding guy. He's really, now he, he's a strong-willed guy. He, he's just a great coach all around. I mean, he can teach you anything from special teams to defense to throwing mechanics. I mean, working with him has really put me on top in the connections that he's got me to. 
has really made me become a greater athlete and quarterback on the field. In, in the few years he's been there, he's really turned that program around. Most definitely. I mean, if I could show you all the progress that he's done to this program, I mean, it would be outstanding. I mean, as far as weight room wise, gear wise, and just as far as, you know, being able to watch film every other day and being able to lift, you know, great equipment, the great weights, which is, I mean, it's best, we have the best equipment as far as anything goes. I mean, this is not, it's not a typical high school football facility. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all above the next level. You know, I, I got a chance to see that. And I can agree with that. It's it's a very nice facility there at Parkview. Um, you know, a lot of people are interested in you because you're a Razorback commitment. Tell tell people about what your strengths are as a football player. Um, my strengths are as a football player is being able to move the chains and get to where the ball needs to be to get to the uh, was to get to the end zone. I mean, as far as that's concerned, I mean, as long as I do my job, I believe we will put points on the board. And that goes for anybody. And you can't, if you can't do anything without those other ten guys playing with you. As far as blocks, linemen, running backs, it all comes into play with being a great team, being able to put points on the board. Is if everybody does their job, we will score. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, that's just how it's good. It's how it's going to be. I like that confidence that you've got there. You uh, you committed to the Razorbacks. You decommitted to the Razorbacks. You committed again. What's been that? What's that process been like for you? Um, as far as the decommitment, I believed I, de I committed a little early and I wanted to sit back and take time. But the longer I sat back and looked at it, the more I realized that's where I want to be. I love the coaching staff. I love the facility. I love everything they had to offer. And it's great to be a part of such a great football team. And the progress that they're making is outstanding, being able to compete with the best of the best and then putting up, you know, great amount just a great amount of effort and being able to like have, you know, top SEC players just on their defense offense. It's great. I, well, I want to be a part of it. What, what was it about the new coaching staff that you like so much? They're very honest people. They're very good people. They're, they're, you know, they're not, they're not there to play games. They know what they can do. They know what you can do. They know what they want. And they've always been honest with me. And that's, that goes a lot. Relationships go a long way. You treat you got, you know what I'm saying? You, they treat, they treat me very well. Um, they're very, you know, they're just, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you in words. I mean, it's just somewhere they, they just make you feel wanted and they treat you as family up there and it's a great place to be. And that's where I want to be. What's well, been going through your mind as you're watching these games now, you know, they played Georgia pretty well, especially for about the first 40 minutes of that game. And then, then they beat Mississippi state and really kind of got robbed on uh, the plains in Auburn. What, what's it been like to watch those games knowing that you're going up there? I mean, it's been great knowing Bill that I'm going to be able to play for one that coaching staff and two, be a part of their their winning progress because I mean, they have really shown a lot of progress from just a couple months that they've been there. I mean, he's only been there for Coach Pittman's only been there for I want to say almost nine months or about nine months, not very long. But for him to be able to turn that around and get wins on very good teams, you know, it's just it's amazing. It's the the turnaround has been really unbelievable, unexpected to say the least. I mean, you know, when you look at, at how they've played, you know, they've been competitive in every game. You know, you take five minutes of that Georgia game out, and they're they're right there, you know. And then of course they yes, beat sir. State after beating yes, LSU, sir. and then uh, of course that Auburn game was a game that a lot of people feel like that they should have won. What are the coaches telling you about uh, kind of like what what's your role going to be up there? Uh, I, I haven't really been talking about a role, but I know what I do want to play, and that would be quarterback. And I would love to be able to go up there and showcase my talent and be a part of such a well team and be able to help them succeed. You know, since I'm, I'm I can run, I can throw. It's all a part. I mean, I'm just there to help them move the chains, do my job. That's what I want to do. There you go. Um, moving forward with Parkview here, you know, you guys are three and one. You've had a couple COVID cancellations. What has that been like this season as far as just trying to navigate the COVID situation? Well, the, the actual COVID part hasn't really came into play, but the cases with the football players have, which is it got to shut down for two weeks. But as far as like, you know, taking, um, you know, just taking the steps to be safe and secure, I mean, that's that we've really been able to adjust very easily and be able to handle it and stay social distancing, keep our mask, you know what I'm saying? Just, be just play a part that we need to play to be able to play and win games. 
So, but as far as, you know, being shut down for two weeks, it really took a toll on us. You know what I'm saying? Some guys didn't work out. Some guys didn't work out. I mean, if you want to be great, you got to do the things that great people do. You got to do the things that will put you on the top, you know, work out when you're not being forced to work out and, you know, condition where you're not being forced to condition. Yeah, so. that's right. Um, you guys got, you know, four or five games left here before the playoffs here. What are you looking for um, as far as your team goes at Parkview for the rest of the season? We're looking forward to win. We're going to knock every team out one by one, and we're going to do what we need to do. I mean, practices have been amped up. You know, yes, we did take a, we did take a loss, and that really, you know, it humbled a lot of people. Hey, we might be a great team, but if we don't play like a team, we won't be a great team. You know what I'm saying? So they really amped people up and got people to lock in. Like, we need to start doing – everybody has a role to play on the field. If everybody plays that role, we will win. And we will knock everybody out of their spot one by one, and we will and win. Speaking of knocking out, you ran over a D-back pretty hardcore this last game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I fight for my yards. I'm, I mean, eventually I'm going to have to learn how to start stepping out of bounds when I start <laughs> seeing those – those big guys ready to hit me. But, uh, I mean, as far as high school goes, I'm getting my extra yards, and I will do what I need to do to get us close to the end zone and put one of my running backs or put my receiver in the end zone. I mean, that's – I don't look at it as a highlight. I look at it as in getting the extra yards. That way yeah. we're not short a yard trying to get in that end zone. I like it. Well, I like that mentality, man. I like that mindset that you're bringing to Parview. And then, of course, the Razorbacks, as, as lots of people are, are looking forward to that. So, Landon, I'm going to say thanks for joining us, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. All right. That's Landon Rogers on Primetime Preps on the Jero and Associates Hotline, and we'll be back right after this. Here in the heart of the River Valley is St. Mary's Regional Health System. Here is the area's most comprehensive range of medical services, along with advanced treatment options and responsive emergency care. Here is our team of more than 900 professionals who bring health care to life through people caring for people. And it is here where you can count on St. Mary's to always be, because to us, community matters. For more than 90 years, our investment in our community has been unmatched, and today that couldn't be stronger. St. Mary's, we're here for you. Medicare is October the 15th through December the 7th. Call Jero and Associates for help with your Medicare plan. There are several new plans available for 2021. Jero and Associates has agents all across the state of Arkansas who specialize in helping you with your Medicare needs. Protect your most valuable asset, yourself. Call Mike Jero at 888-360-8611 to schedule an appointment today. Joining us today on the Jerome and Associates Hotline is Chris Hutchinson. He is the sports director at KAIT Channel 8 out of Jonesboro. Chris, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Glad to, to, to share some insight on the, the wild world of Northeast Arkansas sports. Absolutely. We appreciate having you on, man. Yep, no well, problem. Well, first things first, man, 6A East, Jonesboro. Uh, you know, Jonesboro's a team that – uh, you know, is not a lot of people know a lot about, especially on the football field. Uh, tell us a little bit about how good Jonesboro is, and are they a contender in the 6A East? I think they are. It, it had an odd season because, uh, of course, the elephant in the room being COVID-19 and how it's really impacted a lot of team schedules. Jonesboro essentially play non-conference play. They always play 7A teams in non-conference. So they usually play a Little Rock Catholic, a Conway, and in this case, I want to say they put in a Cabot this year. They went one and two. They beat Catholic, but dropped to, you know, to Conway and Cabot. But then right before 6A East play, they usually take one bye week. Well, because of COVID, they ended up taking two. The team they were originally supposed to play, JHS was supposed to travel to El Dorado to start conference play. That game was ruled no contest after El Dorado had some COVID positives there. Well, JHS had a double bye. On top of that, they lost their starting quarterback at the end of non-conference play, cross jumper, a two-sport star 
He's a Tennessee baseball commit. So he's got some D1 talent growing into his own as a quarterback. Well, he goes down at the end of nine conference play, and then you have Riker Acebo enter the fray at quarterback, and he certainly acquitted himself well these last couple games. JHS won, no, 2-0 and in 6A East play. They beat Sheridan on the road last week, then narrowly beat Pine Bluff 34-33 this past Friday. So JHS is there. Now, defensively, you've got Arkansas commit Marco Avant there at linebacker. JHS defense has kind of had some growing pains because they've had to replace a lot of experience that graduated last year. So it's really hard to tell with JHS. You have a lot of good there, a lot of potential in the offense, but you still have a lot of questions, and they're really trying to find their way these last couple weeks. This week's game against West Memphis is going to be a great gauge to see where JHS is in the conference title hunt. And then obviously you've got Cersei down the road in a couple weeks. And then, of course, the end of the regular season against Marion. And that has always been kind of a really tricky game for the Golden Hurricane year in and year out. Marion is down, but they always seem to play up in that game against Hurricane. So I would say this Friday's game against West Memphis is a great gauge to really see. If JHS wins that game, I can see them as a 6A East title contender. Of course, you also got Cersei and Sylvan Hills both. Uh, Sylvan Hills seems to be a surprise team that nobody's really talking about right now. That um, they, they seem like a solid team. So you've got Jonesboro in the mix with those guys. How good is Marco Avant in Jonesboro? He's really, really come of age. These last, granted, he was at Forest City the last couple seasons before he transferred to JHS. So we saw him a little bit in 5A East play. Played really well, then moved over to JHS, and he has certainly kind of come into his own, really kind of does a little bit of everything at linebacker. Now, he's very different from JHS's star last year, Jashad Stewart, who's obviously in Fayetteville now, because when he moved over to, you know, to the Razorback roster, Jashad moved from linebacker to defensive end, and he kind of played both positions here in Jonesboro. Avant is just a straight-up linebacker, but he has enough speed to go into the secondary and kind of play in that role, too. So he, he brings a different element to the JHS defense on that regard. Now, he's certainly playing well. He's really kind of living up to the hype. When he came, when he transferred over to Jonesboro, a lot of folks circled in on him saying, okay, now let's see how he does against 6A and 7A competition. He's played pretty well this year. All right. Uh, Wynn is a team that's that's probably the team that gets the most attention out of Northeast Arkansas, at least back toward this way. Um, how good is Wynn this year? They're as salty as ever. You, they, I mean, it, we can't talk about Wynn without talking about the triple option offense with they've, they've done year in and year out with Coach Pascal. And what's interesting this year is they moved Martarius Ross. Last year he was one of the, the feature running backs. They moved him to quarterback after James Holden Parker graduated, who was an all-state maestro at quarterback running that option. You move Martarius Ross to quarterback, and it just seems to really fit and click with the offense. You have several backs there with Jaden Potter and Cameron Cameron Speed. So you, Wynn always every year, Wynn always has two or three guys that can really shine and star in the option. Now the flip side is their defense has really improved compared to last year, where they were playing a lot of young guys on defense last year. That extra year of experience has been critical for them. They're undefeated. They're 6-0. and And I would argue one of their more impressive wins was last week when they came on the road and beat defending conference champion Valley View and really held them at bay. They shut them out in the first half. Valley View, the Blazers got a couple touchdowns in the second half to kind of make it close. But if, if to kind of borrow a per page from the college football playoff, we always hear that term game control. Wynn has been the master at that this entire season where if they have a lead, the game's pretty much over because they could just run the option death by a million paper cut style <laughs> offense and really get the job done. But they, I've really been impressed with how they have really shored up things defensively, especially in the secondary. When folks drop back to pass, they've been really solid there in the secondary. This week is going to be incredibly fascinating because they go up against Batesville. So it's kind of this old school kind of old school 5A powers going up against each other. The winner of that is easily in the driver's seat to win the conference title. And you just kind of touched on it. Anybody besides Batesville that would be a challenger to 
uh, win in that conference. I would say Valley View, but Valley View dropped that game already to, to win, so now they're going to need to win out and get some help. Valley View has had a really solid season. The only games they've lost to are to undefeated teams. They lost to win. They lost to Rivercrest in week two. So Valley View has been a solid team all year long. They've had some young guys there to kind of replace on both sides of the ball, but they've got some experience at quarterback at Zach Straysner. Aiden Huntsman, a big man of a running back there in the backfield. And Valley View's calling card these last couple seasons, their rise really has been defense. They've always had a solid defensive front. Same thing last year, but the problem was all, all, all those All-State guys graduated. So entering this season, Sean Cockrell said the biggest question mark was, we're playing a lot of young guys on both sides of the ball. We're really going to have to figure out like where we stack up. And they've really fared pretty well. Now, the two games they've lost to are to win. We, we already, men already mentioned about the dangerous option in the defense. And then you lose to Rivercrest to arguably one of the best players in the state that not a lot of people are talking about because they play in 4A football is Cam Turner. I'm sure we'll touch on that later. He, he's as dangerous as it gets in the natural state. And how good is Terry Wells for people who haven't seen him? He, he really helps fuel that. The option is always good if you have star running backs. It's even more dangerous if you have fantastic offensive linemen. And Terry Wells is certainly that. Like, they obviously – even plays where he's really not involved, he gets enough push and definitely gets the job done on the offensive line. He is easily one of the top offensive linemen in the state. No, completely understand why the Razorbacks targeted to him as early as they did and why he committed. Don't really blame him whatsoever. And it's a really good fit. Terry Wells is a very big man. It, it really, you can see it on Fridays. The good old, can you spot the D1 player and you try to <laughs> win offense? Yeah. If you find the D1 player, you can find him pretty easily. You can't miss number 63. He's uh, done a fantastic job on the offensive line this year. I'm sure Hog fans will love to hear that, man. Um, moving down into foray, Pocahontas is the team that kind of sticks out in the foray on that side of the state. How good is Pocahontas? Pocahontas has two All-State guys. You have Dawson Chester at quarterback, who's an Arkansas State baseball commit, and you have wide receiver C.J. Palmer. Now, the 3-4-A has been funky this year because – Pocahontas ran through non-conference play, fantastic start, but then they ran up against Rivercrest. And the Rivercrest off Rivercrest is one of the more fascinating teams to watch in our area because their offense is incredibly entertaining with Cam Turner at quarterback who does a little bit of everything. I'll get, give you a perfect example. This past week, Rivercrest came to Jonesboro, played Westside. In the first quarter, Cam Turner, who is the starting quarterback, had two rushing touchdowns, and had a receiving touchdown. The Colts did a, a their version of the Philly special, first play of the game, had a 73-yard receiving touchdown. Elijah Nichols dropped a straight dime to Cam, and he took off. They couldn't catch him. And it, it's been really the Cam Turner show in 4A football. Pocahontas is certainly impressed. They will absolutely get the two seed in the, in the 4A3 conference, but – it's Rivercrest right now in the field because of how dangerous their offense is. You have Cam Turner at quarterback who is finally getting attention from colleges. I know some GAC schools have been looking at him. He, he, he's like the perfect prototype. You know, fantastic on the ground. He's really improved in the passing game. And you've got good targets like Keyshawn Scott and Clay Burks who've been great in the receiving game all year long. And then you add the extra element of Cam in the running game, and Rivercrest has been absolutely dangerous. There's a reason they're off to a 6-0 and start, and a lot of these games have been blowouts because their offense has been that explosive this year. Well, in that transitions to the best players in the area, uh, Cam Turner obviously being one of them. Who are some of the other guys that are not really being talked about right now? I'll get, it, it kind of ties into a, one of the other kind of under-the-radar teams in the area is Hoxie. The Hoxie Mustangs undefeated they're also 6-0 and but they have the Powells you have Dalen Powell at quarterback who is one of the top players in our area can do it all and then you add on that he has the size you need at the position to play quarterback but then he could get it done with his feet and his arm he's a North Alabama commit he committed to the Lions before the season started along with his brother Shun Derrick Shun Derrick is in the backfield at running back and he's having an absolutely fantastic season there for the Mustangs as well so in terms of your top players in the area, I would say 
I wouldn't even rank them because they're all kind of – they're all really, really, really good. you got Cam Turner at Rivercrest. You've got Dalen Powell at Hoxie, and I would throw in Shane Derrick there too because they really help the Mustangs. Mm -hmm. Mustangs offense go they have been you know two explosive offenses and that's kind of been the kind of been the, the really the the really thing that's really stood out to me this season up here in northeast Arkansas uh sur surprise teams you talked about one that nobody's really talking about in Hoxie are there any other teams up there that people aren't talking about that could make runs in state I've got one that's kind of off the radar and it's been it's Piggott. Piggott's really been a sentimental story because everybody knows the, the unfortunate news that happened before the season. Hunter Midkiff, the junior defensive lineman and offensive lineman, passing away before the season started. Piggott's offense has been incredibly explosive, and they've had the players. We just didn't see them really mesh together the way they have this year, where they've scored 60 points in two of their last three games. Both were conference games. They beat they put 60 on Walnut Ridge, and Walnut Ridge has been a solid, you know, solid, consistent playoff team these last couple years. So to see Piggott put 60 on them was really, really, really impressive. And you look at – it's a really good question about under-the-radar teams because we've got you know, we've got more than a few around here in Northeast Arkansas. I would give Greene County Tech a nod, even though they've dropped a couple games here and there. They're 2-1 and one in 5A East play. I want to say they're about three – they already have three or four wins, which you may think – Yes, Green County Tech is traditionally a basketball school. The Golden Eagles are essentially – they're on, tri on pace to have their best season in over a decade. And it's even more impressive when it happens at the 5A East. Now, Wynn took him to the shed and shut him out a couple weeks ago. But Green County Tech is really impressed, have a solid All-State running back there with, with David Williams there that's really kind of been the engine for the Golden Eagles. They've been kind of our surprise story in 5A. 4A – not, I would say 4A kind of the surprise is how good Rivercrest has been just because how explosive they were. And a lot of folks kind of went into the season up here thinking West Side kind of defending conference champs, maybe they would have a shot at it. But Rivercrest kind of took them to the sword. We mentioned Piggott. I mentioned Piggott there in 3A. Interesting surprise story in 2A is Cross County because of reasons on and off the field. Off the field, they lost two games before the season started because they had a COVID outbreak. And so their first game of the season was on a Saturday afternoon. I want to say it was like September the 12th. So they had one of the latest starts to the year of anybody in Arkansas. They've ran the table so far against 2A competition. They were supposed to play Mark Tree this past weekend, but that fell through because of uh, COVID positives with the Indians. This Friday is going to be a good gauge as McCrory comes to town. McCrory is always a solid 2A contender. They usually make deep playoff runs every other year or so. So if the Thunderbirds can get a big win over there against McCrory, that'll be a really good gauge of where they are. And they're a solid team. You've got the Beals kind of running the show there. And the Thunderbirds have been really solid under new head coach Cody Goulart, who came over as, after Sylvan Hills. He was an assistant at Sylvan Hills for several years really helped the Bears program there. And now he's been the head coach for Cross County and has certainly turned things around there. They're kind of, I would say, Cross County, Piggott are really two of our surprise stories so far in Northeast Arkansas. All right. Well, Chris, man, I really appreciate you joining us on Jerome Associates Hotline. I am sure that we're going to have to come back to you and talk a little bit more Northeast Arkansas football as the season progresses. And I'm sure playoff time comes. We'll have a couple of these NEA teams come down to South and South and West Arkansas and vice versa because it always seems to happen that way every single year. Absolutely. Uh, Chris Hudginson of KAIT Channel 8, Jonesboro. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Here in the heart of the River Valley is St. Mary's Regional Health System. Here is the area's most comprehensive range of medical services along with advanced treatment options and responsive emergency care. Here is our team of more than 900 professionals who bring health care to life through people caring for people. And it is here where you can count on St. Mary's to always be, because to us, community matters. For more than 90 years, our investment in our community has been unmatched, and today that couldn't be stronger. St. Mary's, we're here for you.
for Medicare is October the 15th through December the 7th. Call Jaro and Associates for help with your Medicare plan. There are several new plans available for 2021. Jaro and Associates has agents all across the state of Arkansas who specialize in helping you with your Medicare needs. Protect your most valuable asset, yourself. Call Mike Jaro at 888-360-8611 to schedule an appointment today. Welcome back to the last segment of Primetime Preps, where Michael Jordan will always be better than LeBron James, no matter what you say. You got that right. <laughs> you know, this this talk is just, to me, is, is ridiculous. If you really want to know the truth... But you know you've got you've got people that that have really believed that now, and I know this is not prime time preps, but it is prime time. But uh, I'm going to tell you, kids, Michael Jordan will always be better than That's LeBron right. James. Just understand that he's that. not he's not your daddy's great. He's not he's not your granddad's goat. He's the goat. He is the goat. Is uh, the no goat. matter by which way you want to spin that, I don't care how many rings some uh, some other guy has over in Los Angeles. Uh, he's the goat. Well, we're going to get to some under the radar games. Those two are never under the radar. This one, is, these are a little bit under the radar uh, for around the state. Of course, we've also got our primetime picks and performances that we're going to uh, bring to you here um, after this. But let's start out with our under the radar game: Siloam Springs traveling to Lake Hamilton. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited about that game, Brad. Lake Hamilton's uh, Tevin Woodley. Uh, has rushed uh, for 276 yards uh, last week against Russellville, and they, the entire team uh, rushed for 430 yards. So really a good yep. ground game uh, by Lake Hamilton. Uh, that's going to be a big game. If, if you're, yeah, listen, if you like that hard-hitting ground and pound, this is a good one for you. And that's definitely a good one for you. Um, you know, I've got to a point where I like to see teams run the ball because everybody throws it now. It's just like you throw it 50 times a game, whether you're in high school, college, whatever it is. So it's nice to see a little bit of, of diversity in offense. You it, know? it really is, and it's refreshing because, you know, these days we've, we've, we're so used to the, the spread it out, hurry up, no huddle, let's just throw the ball down the field, the forward pass. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we're forgetting about that running game and how important it is to the passing attack. Without that valid rushing threat, there is no passing attack, in my opinion. But, you know, Siloam at Lake Hamilton, that's definitely a big game. Uh, another game that we're looking at, Batesville at Wynn. Speaking of keeping the ball on the ground, the Wynn Yellow Jackets, and we talked about Yellow Jackets yeah, earlier go. as well, uh, they definitely keep the ball on the ground. Um, they're an option team. They're going to throw it about four or five times a game. Um, and Carl Washington is the guy that they give the ball to, and he does some good things with it. Just a couple weeks back, he carried the ball five times, and that's not really all that impressive, but he had 171 yards and three touchdowns on those five carries, so he made the most of it. Uh, these two teams basically every year win this 5A East. This is what this, this conference is probably coming down to again in the 5A East as – uh, Valley View was beaten by a win last week. And they were. And, you know, one of the things that you want to look at is, is who is the studs uh, on that team. And right now, Carl Washington is that stud. Uh, definitely uh, would be uh, Washington had a couple of weeks back, carried the ball five times for 171 yards yes. and three touchdowns. And listen, anytime you can put that thing in the end zone uh, three times and only touch it five, that's impressive. Big time, big time. Watson Chapel uh, traveling about three miles to take on Whitehall. We, uh, you know, that long bus ride from uh, Watson <laughs> Chapel to Whitehall. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a primetime performer there at Watson Chapel. There really is. Jabray Shaw, he's rushed for over 1,000 yards already this year. Uh, Ten touchdowns for Watson Chapel. Uh, but uh, on the, with, with Whitehall's offense, you have Matthew Martinez uh, leading the way. So a couple good good players there on that. And another team. Bolding down there. That's Bobby Bolding's team at Whitehall. Um, as he left Pine Bluff a few years back, and now he's there at Whitehall, raising the level of that program. And, you know, Whitehall always has that, that, that solid program year in and year out. Uh, Whitehall is, is usually known for, you know, they may not be that championship-style contender, uh, but you know that they're going to be in some games. Well, that's and what Bobby Bowling's there to do, though, is lift that level. Bring, that's it. Bring them to the championship. That's what they want there at Whitehall. Clarksville and Farmington. This one's an interesting matchup because – um, I've watched Clarksville now, and uh, they are um, – I think they're a little better than what people give them credit for. This is a team that uh, perennially finishes seventh or eighth in the uh, 5A West. 
Um, they've got an opportunity to get above that. They've got an opportunity to get into the playoffs possibly if they can beat Farmington. And, you know, it's a big game uh, for both teams. I believe they played, uh, you know, last season, that big controversial game uh, last year. I was at that game. Uh, definitely a, a good one uh, to be at. It was very impressive watching Farmington uh, over the, the Clarksville team. Uh, Clarksville was, was pretty pretty dominant in a lot of games last year. And, you know, when you, when you get that Farmington team came in, they, they was pretty – uh, pretty brutal uh, with some of that ground attack that they were having. They just seemed to have their way, um, you know, to win that game. Uh, the last time was what, 21-22-21? 22-21 last time. It was it was a controversial game as there was a, a penalty late that kept a drive alive for uh, Farmington, and Farmington ended up being able to take advantage of that, win that ball game. Um, they uh, won that game in that brand-new, beautiful stadium there at Farmington, uh, 22 to 21, as we've said before. Um, but Clarksville's looking for a little bit of revenge. I, man, I like Clarksville. I like the look of their team. Um, they have a very physical offensive line and got kids like Arthur Alvarez as a kid um, that is a big-time good-looking athlete. They've got him listed at 5'11", 160 pounds. To me, he looked bigger than that when I saw him on the field earlier this year. He is a primetime performer, and Clarksville rushed for 308 last week. And, um, you know, it's going to be a heck of a ball game up in northwest Arkansas. Without a doubt. Another big game going on this week, Ozark on the road taking on Mina. And anytime the Hillbillies and the Bearcats get together, you're going to have a slobber knocking. We've touched on Harper Falkenberry. He's uh, accumulated almost 1,400 yards of offense for the Hillbillies. And, uh, it, you know, again, the Hillbillies are the team to beat in that conference but Mina is trying to stay in that conference race. They can do that with a victory at Ozark, or I'm sorry, at Mina against Ozark. It's at Mina. Now, the big thing to look out for in this game is quarterback Max Montgomery for Mina. Uh, he's thrown for over 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. Uh, when you look at the uh, the current stats in the state, he is the the as far as production wise goes. Uh, he has the second most passing yards of any quarterback in the state of Arkansas. At least that's going on to max preps that we can see. Uh, so that could be a key thing. You know, we looked a couple weeks back in episode one, the Bearcat bomb uh, at the last second uh, to defeat Waldron. And, and, you know, we've seen Max Montgomery in person. Uh, this kid can throw. He can play. And they've got some got some weapons over there. A guy named Caleb Hooper is another kid that uh, does a great job. I mean, with the name Hooper. I mean, come on. You've got to be some kind of athlete, right? And then the Brotherton kid. Absolutely. The Brotherton kid from um, Mason Brotherton from Mina there, the tight end, uh, Kansas commitment there. He is – he's a very good player as well. Good-looking good looking kid out there on uh, the Bearcat team. Moving on, Star City at Dumas. Uh, this one's got uh, stay in the playoff implications on it. Uh, these two teams are, are big-time rivalry. And, uh, man, uh, they're, just, they're just trying to fight and scrap and claw – to uh, stay in the race. And then this is one of those games that, you know, it may not have the, the, the stars to it and next to it where, you know, everybody's like, oh, we have to be at that game. But if you're a, a, ga- a, a good fan of, of watching two teams battle to stay alive or two you know, decent teams, I mean, they're not the best in the state by any means, uh, but they can hold their own. And this is a good battle for you in the middle of the conference kind of thing. And it'd be interesting to see how that one plays out. Um, and then you get to looking at another big game. You have anything else Absolutely. on that? No, no. Uh, another big game uh, going on this week, Paris at Atkins. And any time you have those two teams get together, let me tell you, the Red Devils in Sorrel Stadium there at Limley Field, that's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a great game there. Uh, undefeated Paris team coming in to a one-loss Atkins team. Um, you know, Paris hasn't had a ton of success over the last several seasons. Uh, you know, we, we got the news that this could be their first undefeated team since 1969. Um, you know, who knows for sure uh, to this point in the season. But uh, Paris and Atkins are battling it out right now. Uh, on Friday night to see who will battle Boonville for that top spot in the conference. The winner takes the inside edge, and a guy that we have as a primetime performer, Donovan Nooner, um, is a kid that really can go for the Red Devils. He really can, and he was putting that show on last year, uh, and he continues it into this season. Uh, he rushed for 310 yards and five touchdowns. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. That's almost more fingers than I have on my hand, Brad. Uh, five five <laughs> touchdowns last week against Danville. Uh, so, you know, they have several different 
uh, you know, offensive weapons there at Atkins. I know Trenton Castro, I believe, he's still out, right? Yes. So, I mean, that's a huge loss for the uh, the Atkins uh, offense. But, you know, Paris, they took on a pretty good Hector team a couple weeks ago and looked really good in that game. They sure did. And, and they were – they have three capable running backs there at, at Paris. Um, they are a very good team, uh, very much a surprise team in that 3A4. And uh, Paris was able to beat – Baptist Prep last week, fifty-six to twenty-seven. Quit Minute Magazine is the last one that we're going to talk to and or talk about in our under the radar games. Um, Quit Minute and, and Magazine are battling it out right now on Friday to see who will challenge Bigelow in that conference. Bigelow seems to be the head and shoulders above everybody else. We're going to see who's going to battle them to see if they are actually that head and shoulders above everybody else. The winner of this game. Uh, is the inside track to be that contender to Bigelow. Without a doubt. And you start looking at, at Quitman, and uh, Quitman has a really, really good quarterback uh, getting it done through the air with Will Linton approaching 1,000 yards already on the season. Uh, last year, or last week, I should say, they, they beat Yelville Summit 42 to nothing. Uh, so a big win by the Bulldogs last week. Kobe Franklin rushing for 100 yards. Also typing in on defense, four and a half tackles. Uh, versus the Wildcats on the opposite side of the ball. So, you know, Quitman Magazine, that's going to be a big one. Who can challenge, uh, you know, all of these different players? So it's going to be a big one. Um, and Quitman was able to come back against Hector last week. 46-42 was the final score there. That was another great ball game to be a part of there at um, Hector. Uh, but uh, Magazine was able to, to come back and, and win that ball game. Um, all right, so we're going to move on to our primetime performers of the week. Um, again, you know, we've got some guys. We've got some guys that have done some big-time things this week. Donovan Nooner tops the list, a guy that if you haven't seen this kid play, he's a ball, ball player, let me tell you. 20 carries, 312 yards, four receptions, 45 yards, four rushing touchdowns, and one receiving touchdown. So he's getting it done uh, through the air, and I remember I was looking at that stat going, wow, look at this, five touchdowns, 45 yards on uh, four receptions, 20 carries, 312 this kid gets it done, and he looks really good doing it. I'm actually surprised that he's not getting uh, a whole lot more uh, interest in the, the college levels. I'm not sure if it's a size thing. Uh, it's certainly not a, a character issue. Donovan Nooner, I've, I've talked to him multiple times, a great kid. Great athlete for Atkins, and Atkins is a, a team that I don't know that we, everybody expected much out of them this year, but they, they played pretty well. Uh, losing Eli Roberson from last year. Cedric Simmons just got an offer from Kansas as a sophomore. I believe that there are more coming for this Malvern Leopard. 12 carries, 104 yards, 21 of 27, 258 yards and four touchdowns against a previously undefeated Ashdown team. And anytime you can put up primetime stats in a primetime game against a primetime opponent, yeah, that's a that's a prime time performance right there by Cedric Simmons, and uh, you know it's good to see Ced getting innings done uh, with four touchdowns, and you know you love touching the the end zone that many times. Absolutely, seeing a lot of kids that are getting four, five, six touchdowns this year. Bryce McKay, quarterback from Mountain Home, getting the tutelage from Ryan Mallett. Thirty one carries, two hundred and six yards. Mallett never did that. Six of thirteen passing, one hundred and forty four yards, three rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns for McKay. So definitely a good performance by Bryce McKay, the senior out of Mountain Home, uh, you know, able to, to get things done. If he can't hurt you on his legs, he's going to do it with his arm, and that's a very dangerous weapon uh, to have in your arsenal. And, and staying with the theme of Bryce's, Bryce Bohannon of Conway, nine receptions, 225 yards, three touchdowns versus the Cabot Panthers. So Bryce Bohannon, you know, that was a big game last week at Cabot. Uh, we talked about that earlier in the broadcast. Bryce Bohannon, nine receptions and three touchdowns. That's, uh, you know, a third of the time he touches it. Get that guy the ball. That's one heck of a ball game for that guy. You. you know, sticking with the Conway theme, uh, quarterback Ben Weiss, the senior quarterback for uh, the Wampus Cats, 27 out of 43 passing. You know, you look at that thinking, well, what's going on? Uh, with his arm, but 405 yards and six touchdowns shows you nothing's wrong with that guy's arm. He, he's done a good job. This is the second time in a row that he's been above 400 yards for the Wampus Cats. They play a fun style of football, hurry up, no huddle, and uh, Weiss does a great job of directing traffic there for the Conway Wampus Cats, and uh, he he's really putting up some nice numbers there. Cam Turner is another guy that uh, uh, Chris Hudgens had talked about in his interview uh, Talking about Northeast Arkansas football there, uh, Cam for the Rivercrest River Colts had one reception for 73 yards. He was 6 of 8 for 148 yards 
passing. He took the ball 13 times for 119 yards, and he had three rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, and one receiving touchdown. Yeah, Cam Turner, definitely a beast over in Rivercrest. He's currently, uh, in terms of production, the fifth-rated uh, in passing yards, 1,265 yards on the season. We're hearing a lot of good things from Cam Turner, and I would really like to see this kid in person. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Will Linton, uh, for, for equipment, we talked about him just a minute ago. Eight carries, 85 yards, 19 of 26, 266 yards, and the old six touchdowns. Uh, I've seen a lot of those uh, six touchdown games this year. Yeah, we like those six touchdown games. That's a, a good primetime type performance uh, right there. Anytime you can get that many touchdowns, especially when you get you know some of them on the ground, some of them through the air. It shows that diversity uh, as an athlete. And finally, Tyler Gee of Cavett, and he had an incredible second half, especially 366 yards on 31 of 49 passing and six touchdowns for the Cabot Panthers against the Conway Wampus Cats. Yeah, and that was in a losing effort and a great comeback uh, attempt by uh, you know Tyler Gee uh, was down at the half and and to pull that team within two. Uh, a lot of this uh, yardage, a lot of these stats that we're seeing, you know, up to this point we've been talking about single game, you know, entire length of a game statistics. Fact is, a lot of those yards that we're seeing right here on the screen uh, or that you're listening to us talk about, uh, a lot of those yards came in the second half. Absolutely. That's going to wrap up our primetime performers. We're going to move into the final part of the, the show tonight, which is the primetime picks. And, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we love to throw these picks out there. Last week we differed on so many. This week we picked the same on every one of them but that last game, which is the Ryzen McGee game. But let's start at the top with Conway and Fort Smith Northside. And, uh, man, Fort Smith Northside has one of the higher uh, recruited kids in the nation in Drayden Norwood. He's committed to Texas A&M. He does a little bit of everything. He's committed as a defensive back. His brother played at Oklahoma as a defensive back, or plays at Oklahoma, I should say, as a defensive back. He plays quarterback also for the Grizzlies, but – Conway brings in that high-powered offense, and it's going to be tough to stop. It, it really is. And, you know, we just got through talking about two of those kids uh, with our primetime performance. So we know that the athletes and the, the targets are there. Uh, and the, uh, the, the great uh, – what's the word? The, the synergy that you have between that quarterback and that wide receiver for the Wampus Cats, I think that's going to be tough to defend. And uh, for that reason, I take Conway. Jonesboro uh, traveling to West Memphis. Not a real long trip there. Um, Jonesboro – is uh, a team that not a lot of people talk about down in this area, um, but team full of athletes, Golden Hurricanes. We feel like that uh, Jonesboro is the team that is going to take that game now. That They played in one of the better games last week as well, uh, beating uh, Pine Bluff last week 34-33. to uh, Of course, they've got Marco Avant, the uh, Razorback commitment over there at Jonesboro. He, he's doing a great job there on the defensive side of the ball for the Golden Hurricanes. Moving on, we got Harrison and Valonia. Harrison, um, the team that has kind of dominated that 5A West over the last few seasons, and Valonia is the challenger this year, it seems like. Definitely seems that way. Harrison has had a, a good, uh, you know, won three state games for Valonia, but Harrison comes in and they haven't really seen too much of a challenge on their end. Uh, you know, this could decide the conference title um, tonight, and uh, you look at, at some of the things that that we have going on. Quarterback Keelan, uh, Cole Keelan, uh, one of the best playmakers you know that, that there is in the 5A. Uh, 15 of 21, 229 yards and a touchdown. Also ran for 142 and two touchdowns last week at Greenbrier. Uh, so great threat there. Could have been a primetime performer, no doubt about that. Oh. Um, and you know, Valonia has the Kansas commitment. And if you don't know, there's a lot of Kansas going on in Arkansas right now. Um, the uh, offensive Lock coordinator. Lock that up. Build right. that wall and put up the fence <laughs> and put some electrical tape around it or something. The offensive coordinator at uh, Kansas um, is is the former offensive coordinator at Arkansas Tech, believe it or not. And so uh, that's why you see a lot of, of movement here um, in, in Arkansas for that. Um, Joe T. Robinson and Malvern are going to be a good ball game. We both have the Senators. Uh, this one could be one that we miss, though. I think Malvern's flying under the radar a little bit right now. And, of course, we talked about Cedric Simmons getting the offer from Kansas um, as uh, 
as he's one of uh, the stud athletes, especially as a sophomore there uh, for the Leopards. Yeah, absolutely. Cedric Simmons, like again, we mentioned 21 of 27, 258 yards and four touchdowns against Ashdown. That's quality opponent uh, as well. So he's getting it done, uh, and it's not just a cupcake that he's, he's being able to play against. So I, I do know that uh, said Simmons, he's going to be a huge asset um, you know, for Malvern, but is it going to be enough? I, I don't know. That game is at Robinson, and it's for that that I take Joe T. Ryzen traveling to McGee, and again, this is the only one that we differed on this year or this week. Um, and uh, I've got Ryzen, Bill, you've got McGee. McGee is the home team. Yeah, McGee is the home team, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with McGee. Uh, another reason is I have seen this offense in action. I know it is very, very difficult to contain, and it as a uh, I can only imagine how hard it is as the defense of player to know who's got the football when I'm standing just 20 yards away on the sideline and I don't know who has the football. Right. Uh, that misdirection, uh, the trap plays, uh, it's, it's very close. The, the bunch in the backfield by McGee is really hard to defend, and it's going to be a big test for Ryzen. I think this is one of the better games in the state. Defense, defense, defense is going to dominate this game. 6.2 points per game for the Owls. Um, 9.2 points per game for the Wildcats. It's going to be a hard-hitting ball game. We saw McGee last year. They were a very physical football team at the point of attack. Um, I like Clay Toddy at Ryzen, though, uh, one of the best coaches that nobody really talks about. Um, guys got a few state championships down there at Ryzen. One of the biggest upsets in high school football history in Arkansas when Ryzen beat Shallow Christian back in their heyday. Um, big time, big time coach down there. Uh, the Ryzen Wildcats, the Fighting Danny Wests down there at Ryzen. Uh, I've got them picking up that victory. But last week, Bill, you really hammered me four and one versus my two and three. You know, we were sitting there calling that game at War Memorial Stadium, uh, just quietly picking and looking at the scores, going, "Did I get that one? I'm going to get this one." Uh, look, 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 Brad, look at this. Yeah, and, you, you know, and the craziest thing was about all of those games, like Conway and Cabot, fifty-two forty-nine. Parkview and Benton was probably, as far as the games go, the least of the closest ones. You know, Nashville and um, uh, Pulaski Robinson last week, one point ball game, comes down to a final field goal. So we did a good job picking the games to make it tough. We'll see if we can have a encore this week. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I know I want to keep it competitive. I didn't want to pick all of the same games that you did. Uh, and that McGee game at McGee, for some reason, it kind of jumped on me and said, you know, I know on paper. And I know in my head that Ryzen is probably uh, and, and likely to come out on top on this one. i got to, I got to trade it up a little bit. I'm going to go with McGee. <laughs> so that are, those are our primetime picks of the week. And we've hit on the primetime performers, under-the-radar games. We've had all kinds of information coming at you from Landon Rogers, um, uh, Chris Hutchinson of KAT Channel 8, and Jonesboro. We really appreciate every one of them. Uh, for joining us also we appreciate you for joining us and we like to throw it out there to go and like the arkansas sports network on facebook um we we carried the uh, benton and the parkview game last week there's no telling what we'll be doing with that site as as things go on so go like that on facebook and as always uh you can uh join us on the hit that line platforms uh whether that be facebook youtube um, all of the uh, SoundClouds and iTunes and just everything that I couldn't even begin to name all of them. Uh, but we want to say thanks to uh, Tommy Kraft and Ty Richardson for allowing us to be a part of the ESPN family here at on Primetime Preps. Definitely going to be a good week uh, in college football. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for next week's show as we recap all the action uh, from this week. But, uh, you know, Brad, we got a great thing going on here, everybody. You need to be a part of it. Uh, like he said, go like us on Facebook, Arkansas Sports Network. Uh, we also do the Russellville Sports Network locally as a regional thing. So go ahead and check it out. We can see us uh, on and off all week long. Absolutely. So for Bill, I'm Brad saying so long. We will talk to you next week right here on Primetime Preps. <laughs>